good morning or good good day, good midday here in New York. Um, I'm Danny Gregory, and this is Draw With Me, which is a hopefully weekly ongoing series of opportunities to take a break from whatever it is you're doing and join me here on YouTube to to draw, to chat, and to just have a nice relaxing time. Um, this is not a drawing instruction program. It is not really sort of an official artist demonstration thing, but it's more just an opportunity to say, let's take a break and hang out and make some art. So hopefully that's what you're here to do. Um, and today, I have a couple of interesting things to tell you about. First of all, um, let me announce this thing, which is something long in the making, long promised, which is that we will, um, we will have an actual official list of drawing prompts available to you. I have been, um, I've been sort of teasing this along for a while and I've been making it up as we went by, uh, by sharing next week's prompt with you, but now I'm actually going to be able to give you the official way to get this prompt, which is freedrawingprompts.com. Free, because they are free. Free, not just in the sense of they don't cost an arm and a leg, but also they're here to free you up, to give you a push, a nudge in the right direction. They are for drawing, painting, uh, you could carve an alabaster sculpture out of, based on one of these prompts if you prefer, but we'll be using them basically for drawing. And they're prompts in the sense that they get you moving. They give you the first nudge. So go to freedrawingprompts.com and uh, sign up and get, get your prompt. It's a, it's a really nice little download. So you can do it now if you want, and, uh, or you don't really need it for today because uh, we will be... I will be telling you what the prompt is. Today's prompt is going to be number 52, which is to draw yourself as you were. What does that mean? Well, I'll give you my interpretation of that prompt in a second. But I also wanted to just uh, tell you also that we are, well, I'll leave that up for you, freedrawingprompts.com. We'll also put it in the uh, notes below this video. So if for some reason it slips your mind, and I'll remind you of it at the end. So uh, basically it's a PDF. You download that PDF. It's designed so you can uh, print it out and put it at the back of your sketchbook if you'd like, or you can keep it on your phone and just carry it around with you, or you can access it however you want. Whenever you're feeling a little stuck, looking for a prompt, plunge in. Um, the list was designed by Kosha Kona, uh, the other co-founder of Sketchbook School, and it's an, I think it's a joyful little piece of art as well as everything else. So, um, so yeah, so I see a bunch of people are showing up, and that's great. I hope that you have your sketchbooks and your art supplies ready to go. Um, I just also want to remind you today, um, we are uh, just do a, a little sketchbook school business. We are getting ready to do make a lot of changes at Sketchbook School in terms of the courses that we offer and the way that we offer them and so on. And one of the things we're doing first is we're kind of cleaning house a bit and taking some courses that we've offered over the past and we're going to, to take them offline so they're not available to new customers, new students. But they are, if you sign up for any of these courses in the past, of course, you'll always have lifetime access to them. But uh, in order to, to kind of... Uh, make them give you a last chance at them in case you didn't sign up for them. We've created a bunch of little collections and there are four collections. You, if you're on our list, you got an email about them already, but if you didn't, uh, there's a URL down below that will send you to where they are. So these are uh, little collections that give you a drastic discount on the original price of these classes and give you a chance to, to take a, a, get a couple of them at a time and um, save some money. But also, if you don't sign up for them by the end of this month, um, they're basically not going to be available at all anymore to new people. Again, if you sign up for them in the past, if you sign up for them now, you'll have lifetime access to them. But we're just kind of taking them off so that we have room to put more things on the shelf, as it were. So uh, they're just going to go into the archive. And I don't know, they might come back one day. Maybe not. We'll see. 
So uh, look for that down below, drawing collection. So, okay. So today, the idea is to draw yourself as you were. And what I was thinking, my interpretation of it is to say, let's take the age that you are today, whatever that age is, and, um, I'm sorry, live, uh, somebody's having a problem with live video. Uh, I'm not quite sure what, what the question is right now. I'm going to carry on. Um, anyway, so if you are 28, let's say, take off the two and draw yourself at eight. If you are 34, draw yourself at four. If you are 109, draw yourself at nine. I'm not quite 109, but I am going to be drawing myself at 9. Um, so, okay, there seem to be a couple of problems with people trying to find the prompts and trying to find the package of stuff and so forth. So don't worry about it for now. Um, I will clarify that later on. For now, let's just draw, and uh, we'll figure out the other things later on. If you uh, are interested in the packages, you... Um, you can just email me, okay, and I will send you the link. Same with the prompt. Just we'll deal with it that way for today. Okay, so um, so I'm going to work on my iPad just because um, I just came back from a trip, and I got back um, just a couple days ago. So I haven't completely unpacked everything and gotten everything ready. So um, the iPad is available to me. It's accessible, and I like it. So um, let me just get it ready. So. Um, yeah, so think about yourself when you were nine years old. What was the story? What was your, what was your mindset then? Because the idea isn't really to draw a photographic representation of yourself, but more just kind of an image of, of how you were and how you looked or what your priorities were. Um, we'll see. I mean, I, I, like I'm thinking about myself when I was nine. I was, uh, I was a bookish sort of kid. And I was, um, I was living in Australia at the time, and I was, um, I was actually getting, I was moved around that time to go and live with my, I wasn't moved, <laughs> my grandparents, I was sent to go and live with my grandparents. I was living in Australia, and um, I was going to a school that was, it was called Canberra Grammar School. So it was a, it was a kind of school where you wear a uniform and um, you, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't really a religious school. I mean, I think it was Church of England. So I think we would go to chapel occasionally, but that wasn't really the point. The point was it was, and it was, and it was also sort of a boarding school. Although I wasn't a boarding student, I was a, I was a day student. Um, but yeah, I was, I was, I was a reasonably happy guy. And I was, um, yeah, that's me being a reasonably happy person. Um, yeah, so so in those days, I we, you know we wore we wore a school uniform, which consisted of uh, shorts. Shorts was a big thing, and a tie. And I'm going to draw myself in the summer because January would have been the summer in Australia. No doubt you've been hearing about the horrible fires that have been going on in Australia right now. It's summer there. It's really sad. But we also wore shorts year-round, even in the winter. We wore wool, purple wool sh shorts. Um, one thing I do remember about that school was that they were obsessive about your appearance. And, uh, you know, I was nine, so I wasn't terribly good at, at, you know, at 
well, for one thing, keeping my socks up. They had a, a, a real obsession with keeping your socks pulled up. You had to have them pulled up. And if you didn't, you would get in trouble. And getting in trouble meant that you had to pick up 50 bits of trash, like loose papers, whatever, that were around the schoolyard. And you have to go and pick them up and uh, go to a prefect and show that you had found 50 papers. And, and I don't know, it wasn't that, maybe I didn't have strong elastic in my socks, but I would get in trouble for that quite often. Um, yeah, so, yeah, sort of a little self-conscious. And um, just find my correct eraser. Um, yeah, so I like to read. In fact, at that point, I had read most of the books in the local library, the children's section kind of a crisis in my family. What are they going to do if I've read everything? Um, so I read a lot, and then I was sent, I was getting ready at that point to go and uh, live with my grandparents, as I said, in Pakistan. My mother was working on her PhD thesis at the time, and my sister had just been born. So she, my mother was a little overwhelmed, I think. And uh, this seemed like a good solution. So I actually, at nine, went um, by myself on an airplane from Canberra to is it a Bangkok or Hong Kong? I'm not sure which it was. But um, I flew by myself changed planes, and then flew on to Karachi in Pakistan, where my grandmother met me and took me to Lahore, where they lived. And I spent the next uh, about a year and a half living with my grandparents in their house until my mother was sort of ready for us to move on to the next chapter of our lives. Um, yeah, so picking up those papers was always a challenge because the school was pretty neat. <laughs> they just weren't 50 papers. I just remember spending a fair amount of time doing that. Um, and let me see. I think from what I remember, the from what I remember, the uniform was like a khaki color. So I'm going to try and mix the khaki color that's sort of around there. Um, what else do I remember about being nine? I was interested in writing and drawing. I made books. Um, and, um, what else? I was not really interested in sports. I mean, we played a bit of, uh, cricket, I think. And, you know, this being Australia. Um, I had a friend who played rugby, but then he, he like not lost a tooth. <laughs> playing rugby, so that was the end of that experiment for most of us. Like, we were all kind of penalized by the fact that uh, our one friend had lost a tooth, and so all the various parents were like, uh, can't have them losing teeth, so they'll have to wait until they're older to play cricket, and to play rugby. And I actually didn't play rugby again until I was in college, so there was that price to pay. Sports were a little problematic for me when I was a kid. Because um, we moved so much. And so when we moved, invariably, when you moved to a new place, there was a new sport, right? A new thing that kids were into. And it would take a while to kind of understand, like, what the, what the deal was with that sport. Um, it didn't help that I was, like, 
kind of dreadful at sports. So, you know, you don't want to be the new kid who's like screwing up everything when it comes to playing sports. But, you know, so I was uh, in Australia, they said it was rugby and cricket. In Pakistan, it was basically cricket, I would say, was what we played quite a lot. And um, when I was, then we moved to Israel, and in Israel, it was basketball. Um, those are the main things I seem to remember playing. And I don't know what the, I, I still have this tie. This tie was something we would wear every day, and for some reason I still own it. It's very short. It's a very short tie, so it's kind of hard to wear at, at my advanced age, <laughs> but I do still own it somewhere, and uh, maybe I'll wear it for the next draw with me so you can see what it was like. Maybe I need some eyebrows. So, yeah. Oops, that looks like a little Hitler mustache. That's not what I want. So yeah, so there I am at the age of, of nine. All right, how's your thing coming along? Are you, uh, have you captured yourself at... So again, the idea is to draw yourself at whatever age it is minus the first digit. So, so I'm there at nine. All right, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to add another, I'm going to add a first digit, so I'm going to try, try and draw myself at 19, see what that, what that's like. 19. Get rid of that guy. All right, 19. 19, so that's like basically first year of college. And, you know, it's first year, 19, I was, yeah, actually, so, no, I would say 19 was the beginning of sophomore year. So, sophomore. So, this is like in the 80s, you know? So, you'd get uh, a lot of hairstyle action going on. I think at that point, I might have had like a, was sort of an asymmetrical hairstyle, asymmetrical, you know, it was like long on one side and uh, kind of shorter on the other, might have been the look, is it that? There's also a period of like, yes, yeah, so it, was, it was almost like, like that. Um, yeah, it was it was the days of uh, kind of new wave and um, I do remember that 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 fall I got my ear pierced. It was a big deal to get your ear pierced in the eighties. Um, you know, it's like now it's so commonplace. My son got his ear pierced recently. And I was like, whatever. But in those days, it was kind of a big deal because the only people who seemed to have ears pierced were gay people, at least among men. That was like a thing, like, oh. And you had to be careful. You had the right side pierced. And I think it was, you know, you had to, if you had your right ear pierced, then that was somehow a sign that you were gay. I, I don't even know if it was, any of it was true, but that was sort of the, way, the things that we worried about. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so that was my situation. Um, I got this ear pierced at the suggestion of some girl who I can't quite remember who it was. I think I got it, I was in Pittsburgh visiting some friends of mine. I was like, oh yeah, that sounds like a cool idea. So, um, I don't know what was clothing like in those days. It was sort of were a lot of thrift store clothes and uh, yeah thrift store kind of groovy clothes 
remember this green jacket I had? You know, do that. I had a green kind of windbreakery thing that I thought was pretty cool. Also, rubber bracelets for some reason. Maybe it was like the Madonna thing. And, um, yeah. What else do you remember about that age of being a teenager, a late teenager? It's kind of a tough time. You're sort of preoccupied with your appearance, you know, and, and being in college as well. Beginning of being called, be, beginning of being a grown up, and um, there's also the days before, at least in the '80s, it was the days before clothing said stuff on it. Now it seems like everything has branding and you know so forth. But it was also the days of kind of biggish pants. Big kind of baggy pants, double pleated. And I seem to remember, I'm trying to remember what kind of, oh, well, one of the things we wore were brothel creepers, which were these shoes that were like, had kind of big thick soles. And I seem to remember they had, I had a pair that were like zebra fur or something. I can't quite remember how they went, but it was something like that. Sort of a ridiculous drawing. Um, I'm gonna make this pants even baggier. That was the year, sophomore year is when you had to de declare a major, the end of the year, you had to declare a major. And um, that's when I decided that I couldn't be an English major, that I was going to be a political science major. It was a decision that made sense at the time, in retrospect. Maybe I could have chosen better, but yeah. What about you? Flared pants, maxi skirts. I like that. Yeah, the whole ear piercing thing. I don't know. I still have a hole. Obviously, you never you never get rid of that hole. Stuck with it. That's what my mother would say to me at the time. Like, you know, you're making a decision that you'll live with for the rest of your life. It's like really, um, it hasn't so far. It hasn't held me back that much. But it's I guess better than having like a neck tattoo or something, right? That would probably be more of a big deal. More something that would affect my future, I guess. Who knows? Who knows? Tattoos. Who knows what, what the future meaning of them will be. So generic now. But in the 80s, I mean, who would have a neck tattoo? I can't imagine it. That would be a weird thing to have. Um... I seem to remember this jacket was greenish, green and plaid. Yeah, we wore, I think thrift clothes, honestly, again, I sound like a geezer, but somehow thrift store clothes, when I first started buying them, like in the 70s when I was in high school, they were like really, well, much better made than thrift store clothes are now, in part because, you know, they were made in the 50s and 60s, you'd find clothes that were um, that were from like a, a real an era when people made clothes to last forever. Now clothes seem to be designed to be replaced every season. But um, so you'd go to a thrift store and you could buy like I mean I I had handmade suits literally suits that had been made in Hong Kong or. Even in Italy, I had, a, I had a gray gabardine suit that was made in Italy that I had bought for like $6 uh, at a thrift store in the village. I was in a Goodwill yesterday, and um, just ain't the same. 
So. so I'll make these pants into, I was going to make them into jeans, but I never wore jeans until really pretty recently. So maybe I'll just make them dark gray. Yeah. Like in some ways, my style has evolved, but in some ways, I would probably be perfectly happy wearing these clothes now, too. You know? Maybe not the pleated pants. It's kind of not that good. They look really dorky if you wear them now, but. All right, so that's roughly the idea. Um, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do uh, 29. So we've done 9, 19, and now 29. Twenty-nine. You know, this is, reminds me of you know that Frank Sinatra song. It was a very good year when I was. Was it twenty-one, thirty-one? Do you know that song? Um, yeah, where he talks about himself at different ages. That's kind of, in unwittingly, I have summoned up that song in my mind. Thistle says she hid her first tattoo from her mom for a year. So it presumably wasn't on your neck or on your face. Yeah. I'm still tattooless. Plan to remain that way for the, for the foreseeable future. Although, one of the points of pride that I have, and I have to be careful before I confess it to you because it could backfire on me, is that my son, now 25, still is unbesmirched by tattoo ink. It's a tribute to my parenting skills, don't you think? That uh, he hasn't gone that way? I don't know. Maybe he would, maybe it would be much better if he was tattooed, like most people are. He would fit in. We have a lot of discussions about it, though. You know, he'll say, I don't know why you consider that as a sign of accomplishment. I'll say, well, you know, it means that you're not being like everybody else. And he says, well, so then I should, you know, not have a tattoo so I'm different from everybody else? Is that really what you're saying? And I said, yeah, essentially, like, you know, being, you know, don't just have one because it's like the herd mentality. Everybody gets a tattoo, so be the guy who doesn't get one. And he'll say, but that just seems even more self-conscious. And, uh, you know... Maybe I should get one just to be contrarian. Like, why should I just do what my dad says? And I don't really have a great argument for that, but so far, he has uh, he's avoided it. Um, so let's see, when I was this age, smoking was still a thing. 29, yeah. Everybody seemed to smoke in those days, particularly in advertising. Um, I was I was working a lot in those days, and uh, I was twenty nine. I was yeah. I was still a, I was a copywriter. I was in, um, and it was the days when even in advertising, people war suits. So this would have been at the end of the 80s. So we, we had suits that had kind of kind of whitish lapels, ties, um, maybe it would have had like a notebook indicate that I was a copywriter. Didn't really, didn't really use computers at work yet. It's kind of still the days of the IBM Selectric. Maybe you remember those. 
Um, a lot of late nights partying, all nighters, all the late nighters at work, and also partying. Yeah, those are the days. And I had been in a relationship with Patty at that point for three years. So, you know, I was, I was somewhat domesticated, but you know, still willing to go out and have a good time. I don't know what kind of shoes I wore in those days. Just don't remember. I had a lot of hair still. Those are still those are the the days when I had hair. We used to blow dry our hair in those days too. Men did. I imagine people still do, but you know, I'm just kind of out of the loop on uh, advanced hair care techniques these days. But maybe I wore a suit that had some panache to it. Maybe it had some color. Let's try that. What would that be like if it had uh, a nice snazzy shade of blue? Yeah, hey, I think those are the days of like, yeah, you were a creative guy. So you couldn't wear just an ordinary tie. You couldn't wear like a what was called a rep tie, that was um, almost like reptile. A rep tie was what a what account management or you know the the suits. And even though we creative people wore suits, we would also have like groovy ties, you know, so that so you could distinguish yourself from from uh, the bean counters. So maybe I wore like a snazzy tie. Had like, I don't know, alligators on it or something, or race cars or something. I'll just make it weird stripes, slightly different coloring. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what I probably did in those days? I probably had weird shoes, or weirdly colored shoes. You know, like for those days, a pair of green shoes. Oh no, I know what I had. I had black velvet slippers that had skull, that had skulls embroidered in silver thread on the front of them. Yep, totally forgotten about those guys. So they kind of were elegant, but they were also sort of inappropriate for a business situation. And they had skulls, so, you know, they were sort of cool. Um, I look a little miserable on this. I, wa I, I don't think I was particularly miserable in those days. I was more of a Weisenheimer, you know? I was like a, a guy who was uh, on the move. I was up and coming in my career as an ad guy, so... Might have looked a little pale. I remember in those days, actually, I worked for a while on a cigarette account. You kind of had to smoke if you worked on these accounts, or you had to certainly had to not complain if other people did. And um, it was a really bawdy kind of account. Like we were always going out, like to clubs with the clients. We would go to strip joints. That was one of the things in those days. We would stay up late. It was, it was um, those are hard, hard living, hard working days, the late 80s. So, some of you may know Tom Kane, who uh, has taught at Sketchbook School, and he was my art director in those days. And he and I worked together on that cigarette account, among other things. We worked on um, IBM, we worked on um, Life Magazine when it was a thing. So, yeah. Those were our groovy days, being groovy ad guys. Before we, we actually made a video, or actually a set of videos you might find interesting, where we sat around 
we made these, I don't know, about three, four years ago, where we sat around and we just talked about all of the, what those days were like, but also all the tools that we used to use in making ads that now just don't exist anymore. Um, there's a thing called the Lucy, which was a big device that we would use to um, basically trace photographs to make ads out of. And there were um, just a lot of uh, kinds of markers that we would use and we would send out for these kind of photo reproductions of ads that were called stats, photo stats. Um, yeah, so that's my ad guy. Have you enjoyed your own uh, visit, stroll down memory lane? Do you remember what your clothes were like in those days? I guess I could move on to 39, 49, 89. That would be interesting to pro project into the future. What will you be like 10 years from now? What will you wear 30 years from now? Probably like some kind of weird space suit or something. So, um, Thistle, let's learn, learn a bit more about Thistle here. She's, uh, Michelle wonders, she's, she worked in, in, let me just pull this up, uh, I'm sorry. Michelle says she worked in IBM Canada advertising department. I wonder which agency was, do you remember what the name of the agency was? Because I worked on IBM's advertising um, at Ogilvy and Mather. In fact, I was like the, one of the main guys on on uh, IBM advertising. And I also worked at a place called Gear Dubois. That's where I work with Tommy. So, yes, maybe we did meet back then. It's true. Um, Thistle was grooming dogs at 28 and had dropped out of art. Yeah, I wasn't really, at 28, wasn't making art. No, Make, was making ads. Wasn't grooming dogs. I owned my first dog that I owned as an adult. Frank was my dog in those days. Long gone, unfortunately. Um, what else? S. Arts Woot. That's an unusual name. I'm just going to watch and then maybe later try my art confidence. My art confidence monkey is just riding my shoulders right now. I'll tell him who's boss later. Here's the thing about this exercise. It's just doodly cartoony stuff. I mean, you could do, you could take a photograph, go through your archive and pull out a photo of yourself at that age and actually do a drawing. I think it's better to draw from memory though, don't you think? To really try and remember what was the kind of person you were at these various points. I once did a drawing. Maybe I'll share it with you one day. I did a, a, a kind of a series of drawings where I drew every single hairstyle I could remember having my entire life. So starting with like the hair that I was born with and working my way up to like the days when my mother used to cut my hair. And then um, when I lived with my grandparents, my grandfather, um, he was a doctor and he had a barber that would come to the house every, every Sunday. And he would cut our hair on the back porch. We had like a back veranda. And uh, every Sunday we got a haircut. My grandfather was bolder than I am, but he liked it. He liked it. He liked to keep it fresh. Um, yeah, so I drew all these different hairstyles. Like what were the hairstyles I had in high school? What were the hairstyles I had in, the, in my 20s? All the way to this. Yeah, that was a fun thing. <laughs> Try that sometimes. Just you, you know, you can look at photos, but also just try to remember. Like, were there colors that you had in your hair? Were there weird things? You know, um, lots of different associations, lots of different decisions that we made at various points in our lives that seemed really important about our appearance. You know, like we really were making statements of one kind or another. And how do we look back on them now? Are we generous? Do we look at ourselves at a different age and judge ourselves 
as you know, geezers looking back and saying, ah, those young'uns and their tomfoolery. Um, or are we nostalgic and wish we could be like that again? Or can we? Questions. Well, thus concludes another strange episode of uh, Draw With Me. Hope you've had a good time. So, yes, so the prompts. So hopefully you're going to get these prompt lists. If you had a problem with them, um, you know, we're working on it. This is why I delayed it, because uh, we built this website, drawingprompts.com. And let me put that up again, freedrawingprompts.com. Here it is. So this is the URL for that website that has our list of prompts. Hopefully it's working now. Hopefully some of you got it. If you didn't, let me know, and uh, we'll see what, what's going on with it. But you will get this list. So um, we need to pick one for next week. So I'm going to pull up my list. Because I, I just downloaded this thing from the website myself. And uh, let me see if I can actually show it to you here on this page. Um, Right, this is it. This is it. There it is. 101 things to draw. So um, I'm going to draw. Let's say next week. Um, can we pick one of these? Pick a random number. Let's say pick. Uh, I don't know what his number is this. I can't even see it. I'm staring into the light, that's why. But um, let's do, oh, this is a good one. I remember coming up with these, and now I, I remember the, the process of coming up with them, and I've forgotten what a lot of them are, um, but it was pretty fun. So I think what we'll do is, this sounds like fun, um, number 60, I think it is, which is draw the last photo you took. Draw the last photo you took. That's what we'll work on next time. Drawing the last photo we took. So draw, the, download this list, look it over, um, and maybe start incorporating it into your pro, into your process of drawing. And over time, we will we will try and draw all 101 of these, and then we'll come up with another 101. We'll do those. So we have two years to work on this list. But next week, number what did I say it was number 80? Um, draw the last photo you took. Number 60, draw the last photo you took. Meet me here, same time, same bat channel, uh, and we will tackle that one. But don't cheat. Don't take some really cool picture and have that be the last one, because maybe I'll change it up. Maybe I'll say, draw the 10th last photo you took. Or maybe we'll take a picture during the actual draw with me, and you can use that. We'll see. All things are possible. And uh, again, check out these packages of, uh, of, of little courses that we're selling um, before we put them away, because there's a lot of really amazing ones. I'm not going to go into what they all are, but they're really great, and uh, I'm going to miss them. But we've had a lot of time to take them and to do them and to work on them. So um, sign up if you, if you are so inclined. Thanks very much for joining me, for drawing with me today, and I'll see you again next Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time here on The Great You of Tube.